All right, so uh, last time we talked about relative motion, right? That was this class? Good. Yes. Um, so I'm going to give two applications of relative motion. Um, Uh, the first one is kinematics of linkages. Thanks. Really of a single point on a linkage. Um, and a linkage is just a collection of rigid bodies connected by joints. Um, it's like in statics, what we called structures, but a structure has enough rigid bodies that the, that it doesn't go anywhere when you apply forces to it. A linkage, like if you take a structure that's statically determinate and you remove one member, it can't it can't support its position anymore. And so now, when you apply loads to it, accelerations happen, and that's a linkage. Okay, so you could always take a structure, remove one element, and it's a linkage remove one member. And then the second thing we're going to talk about is rolling without slipping. Yeah, so uh, whenever there's a friction contact, um, you just treat it as a totally unknown force vector. You don't know anything about the direction. That's right, we're not. Uh, are we ever in this whole class? Uh, I think there's a couple of problems where you're asked to do that, but for the most part, no. Um, OK, so let's start with linkages. Um, so for example, this is the first one I'm going to calculate, so I'll draw this one up here. Let's say that we have two one meter long members. And they're connected together by a hinge or a pin. Um, this angle is 45 degrees. This angle is 45 degrees at the instant shown. And uh, this member is rotating with a counterclockwise angular velocity of 10 radians per second. And this one is going exactly opposite. At 10 radians per second. And we want to calculate, so if I call this the point A, the point B, and the point C, what's the acceleration of the point C? And I'll start it out with no, um, no angular accelerations. OK, so what's going to happen here is, um, to understand why this is a relative motion problem, this point is fixed, right? This point B, then, as this thing rotates, is moving in a circular path around A. Okay, can you visualize that? Like if you just, whatever this thing was doing, if you track the motion of B, it would follow a circle because it's rigid, it can't lengthen or shorten. And then this thing is spinning around this. So if you had a camera that was fixed on, so this is going through some wacky motion, right? It's hard to it's hard to identify what the motion would be for C if you're looking at it from a camera on the ground. But if you had a camera mounted here, what kind of motion would C be? It would just be a circle around B. You know what I mean? So 
So what we have is a circular motion of C in relative motion where the center of that circle is also accelerating. Okay? And the center of that circle, cir the center of this circle here is accelerating because it's in circular motion around that. So we have like two superimposed circular motions happening. Okay. Um, yes. Okay, so um, those angular velocities refer to a rigid body. Okay, so what that's saying is the angular velocity of this member over here is this, and the angular velocity of this member over here is this. And there's one thing that you need to there's one thing you need to get straight about that when you when you think about it. Um, so what does this mean? Uh, there are sort of two possibilities. Okay, so this one's going 10 radians per second counterclockwise. This one's going 10 radians per second clockwise. So if you ignore this, is this one rotating 10 radians per second clockwise? Or is it counteracted by this and staying at that same orientation while this one moves? Point D goes, yeah, that's right. So this, yeah, so the key thing to remember is that these angular velocities and any angular accelerations are given in are given compared to the ground. They're not given compared to whatever it's connected to. Okay. So this isn't going 10 radians per second compared to this. This is actually going 10 radians per second. This is actually going 10 radians per second. That's what you would see if you were observing it from the ground without paying attention to the other body. Okay. So um, let me just write this down. And uh, yeah, uh, it can't hit the wall. So um, when we're looking at this, um, we're always doing this at a single instant. So we don't know that this happens a hundredth of a second later. We just know that this is what's going on right when this picture is taken. Okay. Obviously, a hundredth of a second later, they'd, they'd all be in different positions. But right at this instant, this is what's going on. Um, so angular velocities and angular accelerations. Um, are expressed compared to the ground. Um, in other words, in this case, uh, member BC is rotating um, clockwise, not maintaining the same orientation. OK, so um, before I do this problem, Think about this one. So what if you had um, a member like that connected to a member like that? And this one has an angular velocity of 5 radians per second. And this one has an angular velocity of 5 radians per second. What are those two things doing at that instant? Well, this one's changing its orientation like that, right? This one's changing its orientation at the exact same rate. And so these two things are actually moving together like that. Oh, 
That's not about closing. That's right. Okay. Yep. So that's what happens if the orientations of these two things compared to the ground are changing at the exact same rate. Yep. When you say ground, do you mean the wall spot? Right yeah, I just, I mean, um, yes, the wall spot. Okay. Yep. Right. I mean, like when you calculated forces and stuff later, like there's a joint there, but it's moving like it's all a single rigid thing at that instant. Um, well, this point B is moving in a circular path like this. So the R vector is from A to B. And this point C is moving in a circular path around B like this. So its R vector is from B to C. Yeah, they're one meter. I said that, but I didn't write it. Okay, so um, what's the acceleration of the point C above? Well, we're going to think about this as a relative motion problem. The acceleration of C relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration of C relative to B. plus the acceleration of B relative to the ground. You can check and make sure that, uh, that if you think of that as a fraction multiplication, it cancels out and it works. And it does, you know, the Bs cancel out and you get C over ground. So this is a circular motion of C around the center B and this is a circular motion of B around the center A. Any questions yet about that? Okay, so first I'll do the acceleration of C around B. For this part of the problem, we're ignoring that anything's going on with that point B. We're pretending it's at rest. This is the point B, this is the point C, and the circular path is like that. So this is the R vector. Um, so, in circular motion, the acceleration of C around B is equal to all ripe watermelons will roll, yet unproven fact about watermelons. Um, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. Do it first, and then I'll think about it. Um, so we just have to come up with these values now. I mean, I'm usually in the habit of just figuring out what these are and then plugging them in. So uh, what do we know about alpha? 
Yep, no angular accelerations. Oh, another thing that I meant to say is, so I'll get back to this in one second, but um, I look at this and say like, well, there's no angular accelerations. That point's not accelerating. None of this is accelerating. There's no angular acceleration. That's not true, because why? It's, there are two parts to acceleration of things in circular and spherical motion. Tangential acceleration and centripetal acceleration. This has no contribution, contributions from tangential acceleration because there's no angular acceleration, but it does have centripetal accelerations. So in circular and spherical motion, be really careful about making the assumption that there's no acceleration just because there's no angular acceleration. Um, usually that's not, I mean, maybe it's, maybe I could say, all the problems I give you, if I ask you for an acceleration, um, there's going to be some acceleration, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I get a lot of, on tests, people write a lot of things where they're just like, you know, I expect you to do this long calculation. They're just like acceleration is zero. But that's not true because of centripetal acceleration. Yep. That's, that's the omega cross. So... This term is going to be zero in this case, but this one is still going to be something. Okay, so uh, what's omega? Which way is it rotating? That one's rotating counterclockwise. So that's going to be zero, zero, positive 10. How do we know it's in the z direction? Because the right-hand rule, and even easier than that in this case, is since this problem is in the xy plane, any rotational things are going to have to have only z components. Um, and then the r vector goes from b to c. That angle was 45 and the length was 1, so that's 1 times cosine of 45. Sine of 45, 0, which is 0 0.7071, 0 0.7071, Because it's rotating, um, it's rotating counterclockwise. Oh, am I doing the wrong body? Oh, yeah, thank you. Yes, I'm looking at the wrong body. Um, so we're doing the body BC. Yes, thank you. That's important. I mean, you can do them in either order. You don't need one to do the other one. But this is just the one I wrote down for. Well, you, before you can write out the relative motion equation and get the final answer, you do. But you can do either of these two halves first. No, um, that R vector is always from the center of the circular motion to the object. So that's different than a position vector. And that's actually going to be a distinction that's going to be important later on. Um, we're going to have position vectors and R vectors floating around. Often they're the same, sometimes they're not. But in circular and spherical motion, the R vector is from the center of the circle or the sphere to the point that you care about. Okay, so, uh, right, I'm, I'm looking at this body on the right, which means that angular velocity is clockwise, which means omega should be... Uh, negative 10. And so now um, the acceleration of C relative to B equal to 0 plus 
0, 0, negative 10, cross quantity 0, 0, negative 10, cross 0 0.7071, 0 0.7071, 0. And uh, that is 0, 0, negative 10, crossed with um, Um, so this is 7.071 uh, positive 707 negative 7.071 0 and can someone do that cross product for me I think that's about the limit of my processing power negative 70.71 20.71. Okay. So does the direction of that acceleration make sense? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, that's up here. Yep. Does the direction of that acceleration vector make sense? It's from the point towards the center of the circular motion. It's a centripetal acceleration only, so that makes sense. Okay. It's opposite the R vector. Um, that is always going to be true if there's only centripetal acceleration. Right. If there's tangential acceleration, then no, there's no relation. Okay, so now we have to calculate the acceleration of B relative to the ground. Um, so this is A, this is B, circular path is this. And the acceleration of B relative to the ground is equal to alpha cross R plus omega cross quantity omega cross R. Again, there's no angular acceleration. What's the angular velocity? Yep, this time it's zero, zero, positive 10. And the R vector is the vector from A to B, from the center of the circle to the point we care about. And so that is one times cosine of negative 45, sine of negative 45, So that's 0 0.7071, negative 0 0.7071, 0. And so plug all this in and you get the acceleration of B relative to the ground is equal to zero vector plus zero zero ten cross quantity zero zero ten cross point seven oh seven one negative point seven oh seven one zero
and uh, I guess in this case we're going to get uh, negative 70.71, positive 70.710. It's going to be the same magnitude as the other one. It's just, um, it's a centripetal acceleration. Yes? The R vector always points from the center of the circular sphere to the point that you care about. So, um, so centripetal acceleration and R are always opposite each other. And now finally we can combine these. So the acceleration of C relative to the ground is equal to um, negative 70.71. Was it negative 70.71 for the first one? And then plus the second one negative 70.71, positive 70.710. 0. And so the final value is negative 141.42, um, 0, 0. Oh, because uh, that's the relative motion equation. So the acceleration of C relative to ground is equal to um, the acceleration of C relative to B plus the acceleration of B relative to the ground. So we broke it up into those two pieces, calculated those two pieces, and then this is the relative motion equation. Uh, you could do the same with velocity. Um, to find the velocity of that point C. Um, the acceleration of C relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration of C relative, uh, I should say velocity. Velocity of C relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of C relative to B plus the velocity of B relative to the ground. You can calculate both of these as omega cross R, you know, come up with the velocity at that point. And uh, it's pretty easy to imagine applications, you know, engineering issues where you would it would be really important for you to know the um, the acceleration of point on a body. You know, maybe there's a camera there. Maybe that's supposed to be applying a force to some object, and you need to be able to measure what that force is going to be. Um, but uh, anytime you're doing kinematics of linkages, it's a relative motion problem. The next thing I want to talk about is rolling without slipping. Um, I'm going to do sort of a derivation of these formulas. So Um, if you want to just remember those formulas, that's fine with me. I'm not going to give them to you. So you might want to do one of those things where you kind of half remember, try to sort of half understand the derivation so, so it can remind you how the formula works. Um, you can just 
use the formulas on tests and quizzes and stuff. I won't provide them. I mean, I'll provide them right now when I derive them, just not on the test. What? Uh, yes. Okay, so let's say that you have an object. a circle, some kind of round thing, um, rolling along ground, and just generally um, we'll say that the angular velocity is counterclockwise and the angular acceleration is counterclockwise. Um, if, if those end up being clockwise in the problem you're doing, then you just treat them as negative in the formulas. Um, and uh, counterclockwise is positive, yeah, because um, if you have, so if this is the coordinate system, you know, with the z-axis pointing towards us. Um, all of these, the axis of rotation of all of these is the z-axis. You know, and so if something's going counterclockwise, that's the positive z direction. So it comes from the right hand rule. Um, and the motion is going to be this way. Well, that doesn't make sense physically, but you can see from this that uh, if we have, if these are the positive values of omega and alpha, we're going to end up with negative formulas uh, for the velocity and the acceleration, right? Because, I mean, you can just imagine that that wheel rolling in that direction would be moving uh, to the left and not to the right. And our derivation is going to be based on three things. So these are the three facts um, the derivation is based on. Um, the first one is, uh, let me label these points, so let's call this C because that's the center of the circle, and let's call this P the point where the, where the contact is between the circle and the ground. The first one is that the velocity of that point P is equal to zero. Um, and let me give the second one too, and then I'll talk about those together. The second one is that um, the part of the acceleration of P that's parallel to the surface is equal to zero. So these two together, you can think of as being the definition of not slipping. Um, that point P has any velocity, it means that the point in contact with the ground has a different velocity than the ground at that point, and that's what slipping is, okay? And then for the acceleration, <laughs> the same thing. Um, if, if that point has any acceleration parallel to the surface, the ground at that point obviously doesn't have any acceleration, so that's slipping. Um, notice that that point P can have acceleration because of centripetal acceleration. It just can't have any, so the centripetal acceleration is, you can think of that as what's lifting that point off of the ground, and that has to happen for it to roll. But there can't be any acceleration parallel. Okay, so, um, don't make the mistake of thinking no acceleration of that point P, okay? It's just the part that's parallel. 
there's no velocity, and there's no parallel part of the acceleration at P. And then the last one is the acceleration of C. Um, is entirely parallel to the surface. So I'll write it like this. The acceleration of C, the part that's perpendicular to the surface, is zero. And you can think of this one as the requirement that, the, that this is a round object. That's just saying that um, as this thing rolls along, this wheel isn't jumping off the ground or sinking into the ground. The center of the wheel is moving steadily parallel to the surface. Any questions about those requirements? It is a circular object, yeah. Well, I mean, it could be it could be a disk, it could be a sphere. It's its projection has to be circle. It can't be an ellipse. That's right. That's right. Um, OK, so for the first one, relative motion says the velocity of p relative to the ground is equal to the velocity of p relative to the center plus the velocity of the center relative to the ground. And this is what we want to find. We're trying to figure out how the, how the angular quantities of the rolling of the wheel relate to the translational motion of the center of the wheel. Um, so um, this. What do we know? The velocity of P relative to the ground. <laughs> That's right. I mean, this is what we're going to, we're just going to rearrange this equation to solve for this one. This one is circular motion. That's, this is the velocity of that point P if you assume that the circle is fixed. So um, the velocity of P relative to C, we're saying, forget that there's a ground there. of a circle this way around a fixed point C. So that's just going to be omega cross R. Um, omega is equal to 0, 0 scalar omega. If we assume this has a radius of capital R, then the R vector goes from the center of the circle to the point P. So that's going to be 0, negative R, 0. And so the velocity of P relative to C is equal to 0, 0, omega, crossed with 0, negative R, 0. And that gives um, R, omega, 0, 0. And so now the relative motion equation says, um, 0, 0, 0 is equal to r omega 0, 0 plus the velocity of the center of the circle relative to the ground. And so the velocity of the circle relative to the ground is equal to negative r omega 0, 0.
Well, this now is the, um, we just chose, so we don't really care about that point. We only care about what's happening with C, but we use that point because we know stuff for the point that's in contact with the ground. So we took advantage of the stuff we knew about the point of the wheel that's in contact with the ground to come up with an expression for the velocity of the center of the wheel. Yeah, it's instant, yeah. Now let's use the other two. And we're going to use these sort of together. Um, two and three. We know that the acceleration of that point P uh, is equal to, uh, sorry, the acceleration of that point P relative to the ground is equal to the acceleration of P relative to the center plus the acceleration of the center relative to the ground. Um, and we only care about these accelerations parallel to the surface. And the reason for that is that this acceleration we're trying to solve for, we know is parallel to the surface. So anything else going on has to cancel. Um, okay, so now we're going to use this, and we're only going to think about parts that are parallel to the surface for these. Um, the acceleration of P relative to the ground is zero if you ignore the part that's perpendicular to the surface. That's the second criterion for rolling without slipping. Um, so we can set this up as, the, as zero, zero, zero is equal to the acceleration of P relative to C, the part that's parallel to the surface, plus the acceleration of C relative to the ground. Yes. Uh, the parallel, we're only looking at the x. Um, but yes, it's, I don't want to say, I don't want to just say x because this is true if it's rolling on an incline or whatever. Um, although actually the way you do it if it's rolling on an incline is you just rotate your coordinate system. And so, uh, but, all right, so um, the acceleration of P relative to C if we're only looking at the parallel part, is alpha cross r plus the centripetal acceleration. And this one we don't care about because that's perpendicular to the surface. Our alpha is 0, 0, alpha. Um, our r is still 0, negative r, 0. So the acceleration of p relative to the center parallel to the surface is 0, 0, alpha cross 0, negative r, 0. And that is um, r, alpha, 
zero, zero. And now we can plug that into this equation, the relative motion equation. You get zero, zero, zero is equal to R alpha zero, zero plus the acceleration of C relative to the ground. And so the acceleration of C relative to the ground is equal to negative R alpha zero, zero. So the two equations, the two formulas that, um, if you just remember these, it'll save you some hassle, but um, there's a rationale for you know where these came from, and it all comes from relative motion, is the velocity is parallel to the surface with a magnitude of r omega, and the acceleration is parallel to the surface with a magnitude of r alpha. Mm -hmm. To do, um, well, you don't have to now because we just did it. To do that, um, yes, actually, you know, did I say one program that would be really useful is that watermelon equation? We're going to use that all the time. I would, I would recommend making a program for that. So all you have to do is enter alpha, omega, and and the r vector. Okay, yes. That'll be really useful. Um, this one, those are pretty simple formulas, so I don't know. It doesn't save you too many keystrokes, but yeah. Uh, for the quiz on Friday, uh, I don't know. Um, any problems that are going to be on the, there's going to be at most one problem you have to do. And it'll be one that you've already done on your homework. So if you did it on your homework without, then you can probably do it fine on the quiz without. But um, yeah, I think, I mean, over the course of this class, having that program in your calculator will save you some time. Any other questions? Okay.